Hello guys, welcome back to this channel and thanks for viewing this uh, video. Today we are going to talk about panels, okay? How to create a panel and then how to add your panel to your frame. In the previous video, we talked about uh, buttons and labels and how to create a frame. So in this particular video, we will talk about panels. So a panel is uh, basically a container that you can use on your frame in order to hold other graphical user interface components. And uh, that's what we will do here. So we will create a panel, we will add it to a frame, and then we will add like a label or a button to our panel uh, on the frame, okay? So in this particular video, we are not going to use the inheritance mechanism as we used in the previous video, uh, because I just wanted to show you how you can create uh, a frame directly from your main class. So what we're going to do is that, let me just remove all this code here. I will copy and paste. No, I will just remove all of this and I will come to my main class here. I will also remove and reduce this. Now we are going to create, first of all, a frame. So as you know, we will say J frame, frame, new J frame. So we are using the class frame here to create our frame object. And uh, we can set some uh, attributes, some properties to this frame. We will say, for example, that set default close operation will be J frame that exit on close. Uh, the next thing we can also set here will be the size of this particular frame. We we'll say set size, let me say 900, 900 like this. So that's 900, 900, the width and the height. We can also make sure that the frame will actually show at the center of uh, my screen. So I will say set location relative to null like this. Uh, we can also say that we don't want to set the layout of this particular frame because we will want to place our components manually on the frame. We will define the positioning of the components on the frame ourselves. So that's why we need to actually say that our frame will have a layout of a null. So we will say set layout. That will be null like this. And then because we want our frame to show, to be visible, we will say set visible. That will be true like this. So now you will see that when I run, now I'm having the frame showing on the screen. I can reduce the height of my frame. Let me say 500 and then run. Okay, I think this is, this is okay. All right, so now if you want to add a panel, what should you do? So in order to create a panel, we use the class JPanel. So we will do this. So we will say JPanel, and I will call this first panel, underscore panel, call new JPanel like this. So I need to import the JPanel class, then I'm not gonna have any error. Okay, so if you want to add the panel to your frame, so you have to write the name of the frame that add, and then say that you wanna add the panel. So the name of the panel is first panel. We will say that we want to add some um, properties to our panel. What are we gonna say? Let's say that we want to add a background color to our panel. So we will say first panel that set background and then we will say color green like this. So this is gonna be the color, the background color of our panel. But if we run this particular uh, code, you will see that no panel is showing on the screen. This is because we say that the layout is null. So we have to actually define the positioning of our panel manually. So we need to set the bounds. So they will say set first panel, set bounds. Okay, so we have to define the positioning. So we will say zero, zero. So this is going to be at the, at the beginning of the frame. And then what is going to be the size of our panel? So we will say two five, no 200, and then Two five for the height, two hundred for the width, and two five for uh, two fifty for the height. Now, when we come and refresh, there you can see that the panel is actually showing on the screen. So that's it. How you can create a panel? You can set its background color. You can set the bounds to determine its position on the frame. You can actually add it to the the frame as well. Okay. So we are setting the bounds as I said because we said that the layout is null. Okay, so we have to add our component manually. 
So let's say that we, we want to add more panel, okay? So we will create uh, maybe two or three panels. So let me say uh, the width of the frame will be 800. So we will create a second panel. So I will simply copy this and paste it here, this, and say second panel. Here I will say third panel. I will also copy this and paste it like this. So here I will say second panel. I will change the color. I will say yellow. And I will say second underscore panel. And as for the bound here, I will say for X coordinate, I say 200. And then for the Y coordinate, I will leave it to zero. And let me say, what if I say here it's 200 and then 200 this as well. Then I need to add the second panel to the frame. So I will say second underscore panel this and then semicolon. So this is it. Now when I come and run and we can see that I'm having two panels on the screen here. Uh, so I will do the same thing for the third panel or I can actually even have four panels here. So I can say fourth. Let me reduce the size of the frame. I'll say 400, all right? So I'm going to define the attributes of the third and fourth panel. Here I'll say third, the color will be red. This will be third and the bounds. I'll say zero here and then 200. So this is going to determine the position of that particular panel on the frame. I will do the same thing for the fourth panel and the color will be blue. And I'll say fourth panel here. I will say that it's um, 200. 200 like this. All I will have to do now is to simply add these two panels to the frame. Here I'll say third panel, fourth panel. Now let me run. So we are having four panels on the screen. So I can actually increase the height of my frame. Let me come and run. There you can see I'm having four panels on the screen. So what if I try to increase the size, the width, of the first panel let me say 400 for example and then run now you can see it has uh taken the, the space for even the second panel so in order to fix that i need to also fix the positioning of the second panel so i'll say 400 here so that now you will see that you know the second panel is showing right here so it all depends on the positioning. So if you position your panels or your GUI components at the same uh, place, you know, it's going to overlap on each other. So that's what happened. So I will say 600 here, and uh, I will also say 600 like this. I will also increase the width of the fourth, let's say 200 here, I will increase its width. So I will say 800 and then run now you can see how this is showing all right let me decrease the size of the frame what if i say 500 okay so this is how it is showing on the screen so that's how you create a panel you add it to your frame and all of that so you can also add components on your panel so just like i said you can create a panel you add it to a frame but you can add you can create another container like a label a button and then add it on the panel but not on the frame add it directly on the panel so that's what we're going to do let us create some buttons so you know already how to create a button it's going to be j button i'll say button one new j button I can set the text on the button. So I will simply say button one. Let me import the J button class. I will simply copy this line of code. I need to have four buttons. So I will call this button two. This will be button two, button three, button three here, button four, and this will be button four as well. Okay, so we can add these buttons to our panel. So button one will be added to the first panel, button two will be added to the second panel, button three to the third panel, and then button four to the fourth panel. So how do we do that? So we will come down here, we will simply say first underscore panel that add and inside we will say we want to add button one as simple as that you still use the add method so we will copy and edit these lines of code so we will say second panel we will add button two third panel we will add button three as we said and then 
curve panel we've had button four. So now let me come and run. You can see that we are having our buttons on uh, our particular panel. Button one is on the first panel, button two on the second panel, button three on the fourth, uh, third panel, button four on the fourth panel. The J panel class can use various layout managers, but by default, it uses the flow layout manager. So what this flow layout manager does, it takes all the components in the panel and it sticks them together uh, to the top of the container and centers there. For example, if I want to add the second button to the first layout, or I will simply add all the buttons to the first layout, you will see what will happen. Instead of second layout here, I will say first, second panel, I'll say first panel. I'll also say first panel here, and then first panel. Now, when I run, you can see that all the buttons are placed on the panel, but they are centered. So this is because by default, the panel uses the flow layout manager. We're gonna talk about flow layout in a, another video. So as I said, what the flow layout does, it takes all the components in the panel, it sticks them to the top of panel container, and it centers them. As you can see, they are at the top here and they are also centered. Also, it's going to add the components to the row until it is filled. To show you what I just said here, I will say that I want to add all these buttons to the second component, uh, the second panel. So I will say second panel, second panel, second panel, second panel. When I run, now you can see that just like I was saying, it will add all the components. It will put them at the top. It will stick them at the top and then center them. Then it will add the components to the next row when the first row is filled. So here what it does is that it added the first button, the second button, but this row was filled. Then the next component will be added on the next row. So this is what flow layout that. But we can also define a different layout on our particular panel. So how do you define or how do you set a different layout to the panel? So what you have to do is to simply let me come to uh, let, let us bring back um, these particular buttons to the first panel first. And then let's come to our first panel. And then we are going to use the set layout method on this particular panel. So we will say first underscore panel, that's the name of our panel, set layout new. So this is gonna be the name of the new layout. So we say new border layout. So I need to import the border layout class. So this is gonna set the new layout of our panel. Let me run. So now you can see that because we have set the, a new layout to our panel, border layout, the button four is the only button occupying the whole space of our panel. All the other buttons are, are being overlapped by the button four. So let's say, for example, that we want to add a different layout. Instead of border layout, we can say grid layout. And this will lead us to import grid layout. And then let us run. Now with the grid layout, you can see how the buttons are being positioned on this particular panel. Okay, so we are going to talk about layouts in coming videos. This is just to show you how you can actually manipulate your panel, okay? So let us come back. Let's, let's say that we want to take back the button two to the second panel button three to the third panel and button four to the fourth panel. Okay, that's it. Just to check, let me run. So now you can see that our buttons are positioned in the panel. I can just comment this particular layout. Okay, I wanna use the default layout for that. And uh, what we can do is to add J label. So we will say J label, label, J label, I'll say, my label okay i will import the j label class and like this so we can also add a label what we're going to do is that we will say that here first underscore panel that add we call this label and then semicolon so we are adding the label to our frame. And then when I run, you can see that the label is placed. So we can even set the bound of the label in the panel. In our first panel, for example, we will say 
uh, that we want to set its layout to null. So that will be first underscore panel that set layout null. And then our label, we will determine its bound. So we say set label that set bound. Uh, we say 25, 25. And then for the width and height, we say 70, 70. Now, if I run, so you can see that the label is having a different position, but the button is not shown because we say that the layout is null. So if you want a button to show, we need to set the bounds of the button, the, that button one that we have here. So we will simply come down here and say button one, set bound. So that will be 50, 50, and then 70, 70, semicolon. So that's it for the bound. And then now when we run, you can see that the button is showing. So let me change the positioning. So I'll say 100, 100. Okay. As for this one, I'll say 25. All right. I can also increase the width and then run. Now you can see the label and then the button here. So on a button, I can say button one set flexible false. And when I run on the button text, there is no more there is no border surrounding it because I set foxable to false. So we have the label and the button. So that was it on J panels, how to create a panel, how to add the panel to the frame, how to add GUI components to your panel and uh, the layout managers uh, that you can actually set on a particular panel, how to add that, how to set it and how to manipulate the components on uh, your panel. It's pretty much the same way you do that on the frame. So I hope this video was informative and please don't forget to like to share to ask any question to write in the comment section if you have any and uh, subscribe to this youtube channel to help us uh, run and uh, to support us so let's meet in the next video and um, take care of yourselves